What's up friends and fellow collectors? Today I got something completely off the wall, totally different than I've ever done on this channel before. I have a 3D printer to talk about. So Creality was kind enough to send over to me the Halot Light 3D printer. It's a resin printer. And I had planned to do a little vlog of my experience printing this right here. This is my first ever 3D print, which is dope. It's a Boba Fett bust that I did. And for those of you guys who collect statues, this is roughly between a one-fifth and one-quarter scale size statue that I was able to print. This thing is solid. It's got lots of cool detail. Uh, it's in the rough right now. I do need to do some cleanup to it to get it you know, where I want it to be, and then I'm going to paint it and do the whole thing with it. But I'm really excited that I was able to get this done. Um, and I just, you know, there was a big learning curve. It took me like almost uh, two weeks or so for me to actually get used to you know what I need to do to, to print with this thing um, and and I'm a novice I'm, I'm very much a noob at this like I said this is my first 3d print so for those of you guys who are coming here looking for a highly you know uh, uh, detailed uh, full of information review on this 3d printer uh, this may not be the one for you uh, I'm, I'm giving you my experience do, using this as a uh, complete novice uh, because I know there's a lot of people out there, at least in my community, in the statue uh, collecting community, that are uh, you know fed up with the prices of these statues, and they're looking for other ways to you know maybe get into the hobby. And uh, this is an option, you know, taking and, and 3D printing uh, these STL files that uh, these artists make and then provide online. So you know, this is where I was able to get you know this thing, which is which is cool. It it's definitely scratches the itch, and then it also allows me to be part a little bit more part of the hobby in that I'm actually actively working to create something instead of just buying something from you know sideshow or uh, wherever not to say that I wouldn't still do that because I, I do love their work um, but yeah this is what we got here so I got the the Halot light uh, close to about uh, two weeks ago like I said uh, I had a friend of mine uh, Frankie uh, who has been uh, helping me try to understand how to use this uh, unfortunately, the, the printer is very different from the ones that he's been using, so there's been a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, a language barrier, I would say, in that he would tell me that this is how it should work, and then it's not working that way, but, and, you know, there's been some updates and things that have made things a little bit easier to use. Uh, so let me talk to you a little bit about the specs first. So the uh, Creality Halot Light printer is available over at Creality3Dofficial.com. It's $579 USD plus shipping. Uh, and this printer right here is a pretty decent sized printer. It's very big actually from what, uh, what I've seen for a home use printer, right? It's got a print size of 192 by 120 by 200 millimeters. So you can print something pretty big. Uh, like I showed you here, I was able to print something about one fifth scale. Uh, granted you have to take and assemble it at that size, but you can get some pretty decent sized prints with this thing. Uh, you also have a resolution of 3840 by 2400 and an LCD screen that's 8.9 inches and is monochrome and that's what's going to be shooting the light up at the resin to, uh, to cure it. The printer itself is downstairs. It's, it's got a decent size footprint to it. It's not huge, but it's, not, it's too big for this room, uh, but it's, uh, it's a decent size. You can definitely fit it on your desk next to your computer so it doesn't take up that much space at all. Uh, the printer comes with a lot of different accessories so you're going to get some keys so that you're able to remove the bill plate for leveling uh, you get two feb sheets you get two different scrapers one that's metal and one that's plastic the plastic is what you use to remove any excess resin that's left over on your fep and that'll help you to take it off the plastic sheet without ripping it and then you have a metal one to help you to assist the uh getting the print off of the bill plate if it gets stuck on the bill plate you also get uh some filters that look something kind of like a, a coffee filter and you use those to pour the excess resin back into your container and it allows so that no you know uh, little bits of hard pieces fall into your bottle you know when you go to reuse it and then you also get a cover for the trough so that if uh, you know you leave resin in there it, you know no light gets to it so those are all the different things that you get let's go downstairs and take a look at the printer and I'll walk you guys through what the menu looks like there is the printer the Halot Creality light or the Halot Light by Creality. Uh, and, you know, I have it in this space here. It's, it doesn't take up a whole lot of uh, footprint, which is cool. Uh, I was able to get a washing machine right next to it uh, so that when I get done with my prints, I could take and put it over here. So I have this little build station that I got myself set up in the garage. 
um, and it, it sits pretty good. Uh, some of the things that I definitely recommend doing is make sure that the surface is leveled uh, when you take and put this printer here. It helps when it comes to actually printing. Uh, but let's take a look at the menu. All right, let's real quick go over what, uh, the, what you have on the menu. Now, on this screen right here, what you're seeing is the latest uh, firmware update. When you first get the printer, you're not going to have this version. I'll leave a title down at the bottom that tells you which version it is. You can find out the version that you're running by going to details and then other information. And then in there you'll see that's the current version, version 2.201.20. The one that comes with the printer is .18. Um, that one had some, some things that I didn't like and how it worked. And they just released the update on November 26th. So Thank God they did that because it did improve a lot of the features here on the main menu, which uh, I think uh, make it make it better. So uh, first up at the very front of the screen, what you're going to have is print and you're going to have settings. Obviously, when you go to print, you're going to have the option to select a print that you have on file. It would store one print on the printer uh, for you to print from and you can plug in via USB on the side. You can also go to the uh, Creality Cloud Online model. And then in there, when you click, uh, it takes a while to load, but when it, when it gets in there, you'll be presented with a bunch of different models uh, for you to pick from. So you like, since there's a Sonic the Hedgehog right here, which is pretty dope, and you could take and download that, and then it'll go through the process of downloading it, install it on the printer, slice it for you, and do everything that you need to do to get the thing printed, uh, which is cool. All right, so once you get out of the print area, you got settings. In settings, you have cleaning. What cleaning does is it turns on the LCD screen, and if you have any uh, leftover resin on the FEP, it'll harden it for you and cure it for you, and then you can you know, have a little bit of an easier time cleaning your FEP sheet. All right, you have update. You can do update via local, which is by USB, or you can do a wireless network update. Now, I've tried the wireless network update. Um, Maybe I'm a little too far away from my, uh, from my uh, uh, WAP, but what ends up happening if you try to do that, at least for me anyway, is it'll fail and then you'll, you'll have an issue running the printer. The, the, um, the print head will just not come all the way down. It does, uh, the, you know, it does a, bunch of a bunch of weird stuff. You have to end up resetting your settings. So unless you're plugged in directly uh, or much closer to your WAP, I would uh, recommend not use the wireless network update, but that's, that's the feature that you have if you want to try to use that. All right, you have details. I already showed you what's in there. You have uh, the other information. You have the, this here where you can get the cloud app. Uh, this is another thing that didn't work for me when I tried to use it, uh, but basically you'd get the app on the phone and then you uh, go to the QR code and then it connects your uh, phone and your uh, printer together so you can see what's printing. That's, that's kind of cool. Hopefully that'll work in a future update. Uh, you have Wi-Fi where you can connect to the local Wi-Fi in your, in your home. And then you have the uh, Z-axis movement. Uh, the Z-axis movement allows you to move the build plate up and down. Um, so you have the back to zero, which will pick it all the way back to the top. And then you also have leveling where you can level the build plate with your, uh, with your prep. All right. And then you have other settings. And then in other settings, you can change the language. You have custom skins. When you go to colorful, all it does is it makes some of the menus different colors. So it doesn't really do all of those wild colors like you see right there. Uh, and then you have the resetting option where, where I told you that if you have any issues, you could just reset it back to factory settings. And that's basically everything that's on the menu. All right, so like I said at the beginning, initially I wanted this to be a vlog of me showing you my experience printing my first print. Unfortunately, I had a lot of problems with it uh, to start off. First of all, when you get the printer, you get your you have the first uh, version of the firmware, and then the firmware is um, it's good, it works, it allowed me to print this, but there was some problems that I felt that it had with it. First of all, the the they have an option that once you take and you go to print something, you can uh, dial in the uh, the amount of exposure that the light hits so that the printer your 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 resin cures at a certain rate. Um, they didn't really have a way of dialing it in perfectly. The new version of the firmware does allow for that, so that's been addressed. Uh, other issues that I found with it, and, and this is probably the one that's been the most, most troublesome for me, is that the software came with uh, a USB stick, which is over here. Again, on the USB stick is the Lychee Splicer software, and then also another software called Halot Box that is their proprietary uh, slicer for this printer. 
Um, the lychee slicer, which is a more common slicer to be used, it's kind of along the lines of like Cheetu Box. And from what I understand from, you know, some people, they feel that it's better than Cheetu Box, but I guess that's neither here nor there, whatever you're used to. Uh, I do notice that it has a lot more features on lychee than it does on the Halot Box. And the problem I have is, is that the lychee software does not work with the Halot uh, light printer. So it's like, why give me software that's not going to work with it? Uh, now, Lychee and Creality have uh, uh, joined together, and I know that they are working on an update for the Lychee software that is supposed to allow us to use the, uh, the Halot light with it, and I can't wait for that. It's because that allows you to have the options to you know, hollow out the print, put holes in it. Um, there's, there's just a lot more extensive features with Lychee that you get than you do with, with Halot Box. Uh, now, Halot Box does have the ability to hollow out your model, allows you to take and put holes in it and all that so that, you know, you don't use as much resin when you're taking and running a print. Uh, but at least for this model right here, it was not working. It kept crashing on me. Uh, I've even tried reinstalling the software and it's, it's not working for me anyway, not for this model. If I do something more simple like a box or something like that or, you know, something with more smooth lines on it, um, then I'd notice that I don't have any issues. Uh, but, you know, this is the kind of stuff I want to print. I don't want to print a little, you know, small box. So that's, uh, that was a problem that I saw with their, with their software. Um, and like I said, Lychee doesn't work. Now, what Lychee will allow you to do is save the file to an STL, and then you can open it in Halot Box and then, you know, take and slice it again and then send it to the printer. But as of right now, uh, the, the, the type of file type that they want you to save from, Lychee doesn't have the ability to, to uh, or it does have the ability to do it, but... Halot Light is not reading it. I get an error every time that I try to use it. So that's something to uh, consider. Uh, another thing that I saw with the printer when I first got it was that if you pause your print, your build plate didn't, doesn't come up. Now, the new uh, firmware that they released fixed that issue, which is great. So now if you pause it, the, the build plate will come up. You can see how it's going, uh, which is very helpful when you're taking and printing something, especially that's you know 16 hours, 20 hours to print. You know, you want to you wanna be able to see how things are progressing, at least, uh, before you go too far into it. So that was something that was cool. Uh, one of the other things that I thought that, uh, that, that happened to me anyway, and I haven't been able to resolve this, this problem, uh, is the FEP sheet. So the FEP sheet, for those of you guys who are new to printing or haven't even, you know, started to get into it, is this plastic sheet of paper that sits at the bottom of a trough. And what that does is that you pour your resin into this trough, and light shines through from the bottom, which cures your uh, resin as it's printing, and then your build plate will go up and down, which you know pulls it from the FEP. So the uh, what happened to me at the beginning, and this is something you know for you guys to 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 uh, do if you're you're new to it. First of all, the the printer when I had it sitting on top of the table wasn't completely leveled, and I didn't notice that because you know it's a table, uh, so it wasn't completely leveled, and uh, and when you would go to print. The build plate will come up, but nothing will be print will be printing. I had like a few fails, you know, right at the beginning, and then uh, you would see like a, a bunch of cured resin down at the bottom of your of your fab. Um, what I found out that to to resolve those issues, at least for me, was that uh, I leveled the printer, so that's number one. And the second thing is, is that you want to lubricate that plastic uh, sheet, that that fab sheet. You want to take and lubricate the hell out of it, uh, so that when the build plate comes up, it easily pulls off of your fab, and then you know, nothing sticks to it. So that's something that I learned uh, along the way, and that, that seemed to help me a lot. But that did not resolve the issue that I have, that the FEP sheet keeps getting damaged. So like I said, they gave you two FEP sheets. Uh, I burned through one uh, doing this one, and I burned through it pretty bad, uh, even with it lubricated. Uh, so I can't figure out exactly why that's happening. Uh, and then the other problem I have is that my second FEP sheet is, is starting to fall along the same line. Uh, so... And then I contact Creality, and there's no replacement FEP sheet from Creality itself. So the FEP sheet that comes with this one is, is kind of unique in that it already has holes punched in, and it's made for the exact size of your trough. Uh, so I like that, and I prefer to do something like that than to buy an aftermarket FEP sheet or, you know, and, and take and, you know, just run the roll and have to punch my own holes. Um, now, that's obviously something that can be done, uh, and, that, and when I went to the uh, forums, uh, you have, you know, that's mostly what other people were suggesting me to do is just take and do that. Uh, so I, I can do that, and that's probably what I'm going to have to do. But I feel like if you're releasing a printer uh, to the public, that you should have some of these wear and tear parts available already to, to, uh, to the public. You know, it's not something that, you know, we should have to try to hunt for 
uh, if, if it was to get damaged or something like that. At least that's my opinion about it anyway. Uh, I can understand if, you know, you don't have a CPU readily available or something's broken, it's because it's brand new, but uh, something like that to me is along the lines of like, you know, a tire on a car. You know, you gotta have something to replace it with. Um, so, uh, but as far as my experience with the printer goes as a first time uh, user, I think it was pretty uh, fairly simple. Uh, you know, leveling the build plate was super, super simple. Uh, it wasn't, wasn't difficult at all. Um, and, you know, there's instructions online on how to do that. It, it's, it's, you know, that one is, is very easy to do. Um, take, taking and slicing something and getting it ready to print, really, really easy to do. Uh, clean up is a little bit of, of, of a chore, uh, but I think that's across the board. It's just part of the hobby. Uh, but it, I, overall, I love the experience that I had uh, printing this model and then now having this, you know, really cool looking statue in front of me that, that I helped create. So I think that's what... Um, what I think I dig the most, you know, and I'm and kind of looking forward to seeing what else I can make with this, with this printer. So uh, that's my thoughts on the uh, Creality Light uh, Halo, I keep saying Creality Light, Halo Light printer. Uh, that's my thoughts on it. Uh, let me know, uh, in your, you know, what your experiences are. If you're watching this video and you're more uh, uh, into this 3D printing stuff, you know, if you have any, any thoughts on, on some of the problems that I had, if you got some suggestions to give the group, uh, you know, I really do appreciate your input on that stuff. Uh, and if you're thinking about taking and, and, and purchasing this printer, I'll leave a link in the description below to get to where you have to get to to buy the printer and then also where to get the firmware to install it in case that it doesn't have it uh, installed uh, from the get. So that's my thoughts on it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And until next time, keep it marvelous.